I want to test two plugins today. One of them is Dustbin and the other one is Tape Cassette, both by Callum Audio. Dustbin usually costs, I think, five euro or something, but currently it's free, so I decided to give it a try. It's not that I couldn't have spent five euro on it, but you know, it's free, so I just thought like, okay, if it's free, it's free. So I have this beat. And yeah, let me go to another place because you already know the chord progression that I have in the first eight bars. I don't know. I think I will just start with Dustbin because Dustbin is the one that has all the attention now because it's free. So let's just put Dustbin on a track. And yeah, this is the track. And now I will put Dustbin on it. Okay, so this acts a little bit like a cabinet sim simulator, I think, because I know that it's a convolution plugin and the main part is this dustbin and you have this pre-EQ section that kind of defines the way in which it goes into the convolution stuff. So yeah, let's try that. <laughs> So you can hear that this is a dry wet knob that interpolates between no convolution and maximum convolution. And you know that because when you're dry wetting an impulse response based thing like an IR loader like kilohertz convolver for example and then you dry wet whatever you have in here then you start to hear all the flanging which is always come on in convolution based processes. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing in itself, but you know, it can be confusing sometimes. Now let's try B, whatever that is. Okay, B doesn't have an influence on the convolution, but I think size does. Okay, I just read that this also says mix, so if someone hadn't noticed it because of the sound that would be read out on the display as well. I don't get what size does though, so I will just check in EQ curve analyzer. Alright, so we got a very complex impulse response going on here and size changes not a lot about the sound just like I expected okay maybe when we are in B mode to have cavity dialed in whatever that is yeah when cavity is dialed in then the size knob actually makes a difference and else it does not. Okay, with this information we can go on. Wow. So modulating the size while cavity is dialed in sounds like a really nice way of phasing the signal. So the mic type section 
makes it sound a little bit different, you know, because you're placing the mics at different places and also different types of mics, a condenser and a normal dynamic microphone, I guess, and no microphone. I don't know what that means. And I also don't know what is meant by dynamic. Like, is it dynamically changing like a different mic for different volume? or something like that. Anyway, I think I want to go ahead and modulate the size knob because it does seem like a good thing to do here. Yeah, nice. So I think this could be a very nice plug-in for phaser type of modulation. Unfortunately on this track in particular, it takes away a little bit of that transient that I have, which is a very defining part of this sound. So I can't go too hard on it here. Let's go on with the other plugin though. And since it's a tape plugin, I will use it on the master. I want to have a nice flavor on the master. So it's called Tape Cassette 2 and it is even resizable in the same aspect ratio, which is nice. Okay, first of all, I wanna make a good default setting so that whenever I open it up, it automatically has a good sound. So my default setting will consist of not seven times oversampling because I don't have the best computer ever, but maybe four times. That sounds reasonable for something that adds vibrato. Then I will try to turn off impulse response. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I think I will actually use impulse response turned off as the default setting because turning it on takes away a lot of the high end and that would not make sense for a lot of sounds where the transient is important, but only some sounds that should be more distant. And I have one of these sounds in mind actually. So saving this as a default preset for here. Now going on to the pad, the nostalgia pad, which could just need something like that. So tape cassette 2, but this time with impulse response turned on.
maybe before going into the reverb. Yeah, that really rounds off the sound nicely. I want to take a quick moment and compare this plugin with the plugin that I released myself, which is called Nell. So let's take this off the master channel again and instead use Nell. And now, sorry to the developer of Tape Cassette 2, but you know I make plugins too, so I want to compare now. So this is called Nell. And recently someone said that they didn't even know Nell yet. So I thought it's worth it to mention this plugin again, which is the first big plugin that I ever made. And it's also a vibrato. On this sound in particular, it sounds like this. Which is really subtle. But if you want to increase the density of the sound or the, the maximum depth, more to say, then you have to go to the audio settings where you can increase the buffer size of the internal delay. And in your presets that you make, the buffer size is also saved. So now I could use a buffer size of 400 milliseconds instead of 4, and then it sounds like this. Which obviously is way over the top, but these kind of settings are very useful when you are using low frequencies. which sounds very trippy on headphones in my opinion. Now let's go back to something more sane, like 20 milliseconds. Now you see that this is the Perlin noise modulator. It, well, it generates Perlin noise. And if you don't know Perlin noise yet, then you should Google that because it's a very interesting topic. Perlin noise is often used in game development to create terrain in a procedural way, you know, like in Minecraft or in No Man's Sky, even though they use some a bit more complex techniques. But Perlin noise is always like at the center of this kind of stuff, which makes it very interesting. But I also have some other modulators in here, like the dropout modulator. And if I go to the second modulator with my mods mix, then I can dial in the settings of the dropout modulator as well. <laughs> Now, as you can hear, the dropout modulator checks in regular intervals, which is defined by the chance knob. If it should create a new dropout, and if yes, then this is the length of the dropout, and spin defines if it should wiggle around a little bit as it decays. While hard is sort of a smoother, like when you're dialing it up, it becomes more apparent, the dropout, and if you turn it down, then it becomes a bit smoother. And yeah, with like all of the parameters have a width control, uh, I mean all of the modulators. Now I'm dialing in something in the middle between those. Now a little word of caution here, because this plugin does not always sound great. You can go into the settings where you can turn off or on oversampling. And if you turn oversampling off, even if you use a good interpolation method like spline, it will sound a little scratchy. Did you hear the crackles in, in the audio? Yeah, that is when you are using a vibrato style plugin without oversampling. That's what, what you hear then. So I turn off oversampling again and then I can even use linear interpolation and it still sounds better than without oversampling, which is just excellent in my opinion. The thing is, I think that my plugin sounds better than Tape Cassette 2 in this case. Let's compare again. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it does. Because the saturation in tape cassette 2 sounds good, but I don't want to have it on the master. I mean, that was one of the reasons why I made my plugin Nell in the first place. Because I think all of these random vibrato plugins, they always try to also add some other types of audio degradation. And I didn't like that. I wanted to have control only over the vibrato. So. This is one of the instances where I actually feel like it makes sense that I just have made Nell. Going back to the nostalgia pad, that might be a completely different story now. If I try to use Nell on this thing, I could also try to dial in some interesting settings. But it doesn't make so much of a difference. I still like it, of course, but the convenience of Tape Cassette 2 with built-in saturation and some nice sounding impulse response thing, it is just a little bit more than just Nell in this case. Even though I must say I wish I could turn off the noise oscillator completely. I'm not sure, is it actually on? First of all, let's get rid of Nell here again and let's just check in signalizer in the spectrum analyzer of signalizer, if this thing adds noise when noise is turned down. So it does. It does add noise at minus 130 decibels. And I think that, yeah, it says minus 80 decibels, but it's minus 130 decibels. If it was minus 80, it would be around here on the graph. So the label is wrong. And I also don't like that you can not turn it off completely. I think that should be added to tape cassette and then it would be maybe a nice feature. But I must say the noise oscillator in this plugin does not sound very nice in general. I mean, you are basically distorting the entire sound of your input and also applying a low pass and an impulse response that also takes away the high end. So three things that reduce the high end energy and the energy of the transients. But then you just dial in noise that is completely flat and dominates the high end. I think it would make sense if there was a possibility to at least let this be pink noise or something like that so that it's a bit more natural. Maybe that's just me, but I think that would just make this plugin so mm, perfect and then we could really enjoy that. If you are really concerned about this thing not being able to turn off the noise completely, you could probably just go ahead and add an expander to the signal where you, you know, just say if it's below 130. Or actually, we should probably give it a little bit more headroom. Now it is actually down to minus 160, which is at least better than it was before. Yeah, that makes sense because minus 30 decibels is the range of this plugin. This plugin is not meant for super hard changes. Maybe we could try kilohertz dynamics instead. Just say it cuts off, but a really, 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 really low sound. So the lowest that we can go with this is minus 50 decibels. So we can actually give it a bit more headroom here. Now this is so low that it will not make a difference for most sounds, I think. But we could try to confirm or not confirm that. So our sound lives up here all the time and not down here. So of course this is a pad. You would have to try that on something more interesting like drums or so. But this is a pretty safe setting. Okay, okay, stop. Now the only problem that I have with this is that this plugin unfortunately does not have look ahead. And when I'm using expanders, I always want to have look ahead in case there are transients and stuff. So this is not an all around solution that you can use all the time, but it might work sometimes like in this case, and then it's cool, I guess. So I will just keep that here for now because this is just a pad, so it's all right. And I don't have to take more care. I just want to have my headroom for the master and I will not use Nell for this but while we're at it I will still show you one thing which is the audio rate modulator or my favorite modulator in this plugin 
It is the most crazy modulator ever because it takes the MIDI input and then modulates your signal according to it. Like it interprets it as a pitch and then the vibrato has the speed of that pitch, which is just way faster than any vibrato ever. It sounds like phase distortion and it is phase distortion. You have to use really low buffer sizes for that, like one millisecond, and then it starts to make sense. That's also a nice way of using it, just turning down the octave so much that you can hear the vibrato in this again, then dialing in with in left-right mode so that you can hear it wobble on your headphones like crazy. You don't know why, but it sounds harmonic because it is actually harmonic, but just in a sub-harmonic way. And yeah, there are different ways to use the audio rate modulator on a signal. I can imagine better signals for that than this, like bass lines, for example, where you don't get so much aliasing because at that point, no matter how much you're oversampling, you just get a lot of side lobes on all of the harmonics and stuff like that. But it still sounded kind of cool, so I just wanted to show you that. Now, just for fun, let's also put the dustbin plug in on the master, just so we know what it sounds like in a very extreme way. I like this plugin because it really helps you to get a feel for how it must feel to be a really conservative politician that is still in school because they are put into the trash bin and that's why they became so grumpy and make dumb laws. Okay, that sounded kind of boomy. I'm currently wondering what would it sound like if I only kept the boominess. And then dialed and mix. That's actually kind of cool, but it's quieter than the original sound and. This out gain knob only applies to the wet signal and not the entire signal, so that makes it a little bit hard to dry wet that like this. I think I would have to put that into another chain actually, which gets awfully complicated. Okay, I like that because it shows me that there is some oomph that I could add to the mix but I don't want to keep that on the master because I think that could also just mess up the clarity in the low mids at this point because it is just convolution and convolution on a sound that is already quite convoluted it cannot lead to a lot of headroom you know but I like to think of tools like this just as an indicator tool to show you what you can still do in the mix not necessarily something that you keep just like it is on there but just something that gets you to new ideas which is what just happened so it does fulfill this job as of my conclusion i can just say that i really like these two plugins it's very creative to just make such a specific type of convolver and i like the design of the interface and when it comes to tape cassette 2 i think that is actually the more useful plugin here because it just serves this general purpose of wanting to have something that sounds a little bit more like cassettes. Normally when I want to make cassette stuff, 
I use gel tape model, but it always takes a long time to dial in all the settings. It is definitely worth it to try though, because there are some great ways to modify the shape of the sound. You know, you can even change the hysteris model and it's modeled after some real life stuff. So different oversampling settings as well. So yeah, you can really not complain about chow tape and it even got a new version released lately that I didn't even download yet. So there is more to come from chow and I don't know if this thing is still in development, but the good thing about it is just that it's really easy to use. So I would say it's pretty safe to say that they are just different things for different situations, even though the underlying algorithm works similarly and solves a similar problem as well. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little plug-in test. Please consider a little donation to my channel. I have the buy me a coffee link in the description. Thank you for coming around and see you next time.